Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda. <laughs> Am I, or, <laughs> or would I be, wait, would I be <laughs> just? <laughs> In honor of all my Texas yo-yos, there are a lot of you. I'm gonna cake a cowboy hat. To make my cowboy hat cake, I have to start by making the brim. I made my hat brim a week and a half in advance. The sooner you can do it, the better. I made myself a template of the brim by just tracing this very brim onto a piece of parchment paper. Then I rolled out some white gum paste to a quarter of an inch thick and used that template by pinning it directly onto my gum paste and cutting out my oval. Working quickly, the next thing I have to do is make my brim turn up like this. Is there a name for the turn up? The turn up. In order to create this turn up on my hat brim, <laughs> I greased the sides of two of my square cake pans and then I carefully folded up each side of my brim and laid it against the cake pans. And then I let that brim dry in that position for a very long time. This show is not called how to brim it or how to turn up it. It's called how to cake it. So it's time to move on to cake. To make this cowboy hat cake, I made four pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter, divided it into two portions, and dyed one portion red. This cake is gonna be red and white striped inside. It's very Americana. I baked my plain vanilla batter in an eight inch round cake pan, and my red vanilla batter in an eight inch and seven inch round cake pan. I removed my cakes from their pans, leveled them, and cut the caramelization off the bottom. I cut my plain vanilla cake into two layers horizontally, and then I cut one of my red vanilla cakes into two layers horizontally as well, and the final red cake was cut into one layer horizontally. All in all, I had five layers of cake that were all the same height. Texas is the state where the queen is born. The Queen of England. No, no, Texas. Jocelyn. The Queen of England is from England. Queen B, Beyonce, is from Texas. Oh, sorry. Elizabeth, please, look at me. <laughs> Just because you live in a palace and you have a tower of jewels and you're on the back of all my money, that doesn't, that doesn't make a queen. Can you fill a stadium? <laughs> It's simple syrup time, y'all. Sir Squeeze, where are you? I use simple syrup to really lock the moisture into my cakes while I'm decorating them. But I think Sir Squeeze is really happiest when he's spraying flavored simple syrup. I have a full flavor infused simple syrup playlist. You should check it out. We'll put it here. <laughs> no, over there. Oh, over here. <laughs> And if you don't yet know how to make simple syrup, there is a video for that. We'll put a link below. I think I'm gonna keep this cowboy hat and dress up as a Texan for Halloween. What are you gonna wear, Sir Squeeze? Obviously, we made sure Sir Squeeze was gonna have a Halloween costume. Now it's time to fill and stack my cakes, alternating the colors using my Italian meringue buttercream. So from the bottom up, my cake began red, white, red, white, red. It's like a candy cane. A Texan candy cane. Texan candy cane. <laughs> and if you are a Texan, and you've always thought that your state would look good as the A in cake, this t-shirt is available at howtocakeit.com just for you, y'all. And y'all, and y'all, and y'all. <laughs> Permission to remove my cowboy hat, Jocelyn? I took a piece of parchment paper, laid it on top of the bottom of my cowboy hat, and just traced out this oval. And then I did the same thing on top of my hat, tracing out the full oval, and also marking these indents. Now I cut these templates out of my parchment paper and had them ready for carving. Guess what, Yolanda? Yes, I know, Jocelyn, you give me a minute. <gasps> you let me say that with hat head? Oh my, oh my God, now I have to wear the hat. I remove my cake from the fridge and begin carving. The first thing I did was flip my cake over and laid the larger oval from the inside of the hat on top of the cake. I used a small serrated knife to start to carve away the oval from my circular, circular cakes? I have never said that. <laughs> from my round cake. Much better. Then I flipped my cake 
back right side up and placed my smaller oval template on top. And I started to carve down from that template to the edges at the bottom of my cake. Now that I'm happy with the overall shape of my cowboy hat, it's time to carve out these, um, I'm not taking my hat off, these cowboy hat nooks. <laughs> Because I already marked those indents on my smaller template, I cut them out with scissors and then placed it on top of my hat to help guide where I would cut. I was very happy with them, with my cowboy hat nooks. That was good cowboy hat nooking. But I'm not done because if you look over here, there's this like cowboy hat groove. So I used my small serrated knife to cut away cake and create that groove. And I also cut my cake on a little bit of a, like a downhill. Cause if you look, it's just a touch lower in the back. I think I need a selfie because you're never going to see Yolanda in the cowboy hat again. Oh, I love it. My last iPhone was completely smashed. And that's because Yolanda always tries to text with buttercreamy hands. No more. Like, look at this. <laughs> you can get this sprinkle fly grip at howtokickit.com right now, but this week we are launching our other fly grip designs. Now that I'm happy with my final cowboy hat shape, it is time to crumb coat and chill. I will not line dance. <laughs> I use my tan meringue buttercream and my small offset spatula. It can be really tricky to get into like the nooks and grooves. Once my crumb coat is nice and chilled, I ice my cake a final time, paying real attention to the nooks and grooves and just the general shape of the cowboy hat. And now it's time to chill the cake again. It's time to roll out my fondant to decorate this cake. I start by rolling out my white fondant and then my red fondant. I roll both of these pieces out to about a sixteenth of an inch, just nice and thin so that we can create stripes on our hat brim. Next up is the blue fondant, which I'm going to roll out and cover the body of the hat brim. Pick it up and carefully place it over the hat. There's gonna be a big air pocket down in this groove before you start to smooth your fondant. So I just used a pin and made a few gentle pricks to help release the air as I was smoothing the fondant down into the groove. Now I tuck in the fondant a little with my fingertips and cut it very clean around the base of the hat. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna put my hat cake in the fridge to keep chilled and move on to decorating my hat brim. It should be nice and dry by now. I wanna decorate this brim with red and white stripes. So I'm gonna use the fondant that I rolled out before, cutting three quarter inch stripes from both the red and the white. To help keep my stripes aligned, I actually marked out the center of the oval shape of my brim. So I just laid a ruler on top and kind of scored the top of my gum paste so that I could see that line in the center. To help my fondant stripes stick to my gum paste brim, I'm going to brush on a layer of clear piping gel. Time to start laying my stripes. So I begin in the center at that center mark by laying down a red stripe. I think I started with red. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Then I keep repeating the stripe pattern, laying a white stripe next to the red, then a red stripe next to the white, then a white stripe next to the red. You understand what I'm saying. They're stripes. I had to put stripes on the underside of the brim because I couldn't have like a plain turnip. You know what I mean? I brushed on some more piping gel under the turnips on both sides of my hat. And then I lined up the stripes as best I could, like looking from the top, making sure they weren't diagonal when the stripes on top are straight. As I go along, I use a really sharp little scalpel to trim the excess fondant from the side of the brim. You can use a little scalpel or an X-Acto knife or a really sharp paring knife. I need to create a nice blue rim for the edge of the brim of my hat, and I get to use this guy. 
I extruded the same blue fondant that I covered my hat with, but first I softened it really well with some vegetable shortening. This has always been a really handy tool for me when I want small tubes of even fondant. I am so excited. We now sell these at howtokickit.com. This is one of my favorite tools and it doubles as a musical instrument. Sing, sing a country song. I secure my tubes of blue fondant to the side of the brim with a little bit of clear piping gel. Jocelyn, yes. I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> of course, I wanted to use another one of my favorite tools, which is the overstitch wheel. So I used my overstitch wheel to add just sort of, um, what, a, a seam? Stitching. Very good, Jocelyn. <laughs> I was testing you and you passed. You can stay. I used my overstitch wheel to add some stitching just along the inside of the blue rim that I just added on top of my stripes. I really feel that my hat needs a little more decoration on the blue hat portion. So I cut out some stars from my rolled out white fondant and added them all along the base of the blue hat. I did two sizes of stars and I alternated sizes. I used a fabric measuring tape to measure around my hat and make little marks so that I would place my stars evenly. And then I glued my stars on with just a little bit of water. If you want your own star plunger cutter, it's actually a set of three. I'll put a link in the description below. I love using plunger cutters, just makes life easier. This hat is about to come together. It's time to lay the blue portion of my hat onto the brim. I need to make some grommets so that when I make my rope, it has something to go through. So what I did was rolled out just a tiny bit of yellow gum paste and then I used two different piping tips to cut a circle within a circle to make little rings. I always cut extra when I make these kind of details. It's very easy to snap and break it just in your hand. And then I brushed on a thin layer of vegetable shortening followed by a layer of gold luster dust. It's time to make this rope. Helps you like keep your hat in place. So I used my clay extruder once again, this time fitted with a really tiny round faceplate. I extruded white fondant, then red fondant, and then blue fondant from my clay extruder. Don't forget when you order this clay extruder from howtokickit.com, it actually comes with a set of different faceplates that allow you to make tons of different shapes. I now have four tubes of each color, and what I'm gonna do is glue them together. First, I glue together my blue and red tubes with some clear piping gel, and then I glue a white tube on top of these two colors. Now I need to twist my tubes, basically rolling it on my table, one hand away from me, one hand towards me, to create almost a braid, but really a twist. I glue two of my gold grommets on either side of the hat with a little bit of clear piping gel. Then I trimmed one of my ropes of fondant and attach it to my hat running from one grommet across the top to the other. I tried to glue it on sort of upright into the grommet because the strings come down and go around your head. And when I got to here, I actually tried to tie it in a knot. <laughs> I don't even know what I was thinking because it's fondant. I trimmed two ends and two little pieces wrapped around to create the look of a knot. Much better. This cowboy hat cake is done, y'all. 
Please subscribe to my channel and sign up to be a VIP. You get my videos the night before everyone else sees them and you get promos and specials sent just to you. Y'all, that cake was good. <laughs>